everyone. Welcome to another episode of Real Rap Wrestling here on our YouTube channel, Real Rap Productions. My name is JP. This is my co-host, Avi, and my other co-host, Gio. Hello, hello. Welcome back. Yeah, I'm what back. A- <laughs> At this point, I guess I am just a co-host because yeah. I'm always here for this part of it. <laughs> oh, yeah. I feel like, you know, I might as well. Yeah. Might as well. Um, we might have a couple other people on soon. Um, some yeah old wfcs friends some new wfcs friends who knows um i know chris was interested in coming here yeah, so yeah, yeah. Nice. we gotta get him on we'll here. See. he has a lot to talk about oh yeah um <laughs> he wanted to be on this one but uh he didn't finish fast lane yet so he said uh, yeah he'll, we, he has out. to catch up yeah uh speaking of which yeah let's uh talk about that um you also, want to start from the beginning of the card yeah we can start from the beginning of the card um also before we get into it be sure to like and subscribe our video yes. and our channel um we appreciate all the views that we got last time that was pretty nice um so thank you for supporting and everything but let's get on with it so the first thing yeah. saturday was uh wb fastlane uh, wb fastlane and the card started off with um i think it was cody and cody and jay right yeah cody and jay cody versus, and jay versus, versus the judgment day um mm-hmm. did not expect that ending um, <laughs> Same. not even a little bit i did a predictions card right before it and I got to tell you, I got almost every single one wrong. <laughs> really? I Well, almost every single one wrong being like, I think I got like more than half of them wrong because mm. I really thought that some of the matches were just like super obvious. And yeah. This was definitely uh, one of them that I didn't expect because um, Cody just finished the wrong story. <laughs> <laughs> he Cody did. just finished the wrong story. Oh, well, what a match. It was match a pretty good match. Really you good know, match. Like, I like the pairing of Jay and Cody at the moment. Um, we'll see because, how it ages yeah. for sure. Because, um, you know, it's been starting off pretty well. Uh, they got the yeet over, which was fun. The yeet was pretty funny. Yeah, yeah. the press conference after was funny as hell. Probably the best part of Fastlane was yeah. the press conference after because mm-hmm. um, those two were definitely both on, like, at least six or seven shots of tequila yeah. after that show. It was nuts. It was hilarious. Jay oh. could barely speak, <laughs> um, but he chose to speak the entire time anyways. Yeah. Um, Cody was, like, just fucking sloshed. <laughs> And laughed at everything Jay said, even though half the stuff that Jay said didn't make sense. Yeah. Um, but I like them together. I really do. And Me I think too. I think um I think in terms of like the the route that they're going for, the I like how they're kind of making everyone have that like Kevin Owens mindset of thing where they, they don't forget everything that happened in the past. That's a good thing. And keeping up the t- you know, yeah, it's it's long term storytelling at its finest. Um, you know, I just last night or sorry, two nights ago rather. Um, the conversation between, um, you know, Jay and Drew was really, really tense and yeah. you know, reminding them of what happened at Clash. Um, obviously, Kevin Owens was super hesitant prior to their tag match on the main event on Monday, um, which I thought was really cool. I loved the idea of um, them not just throwing Jay into Raw and expecting him as a face to get over because he's no longer tied with the bloodline. I like this little, like, ambiguous um, storyline they're going with where, you know, is is Jay Uso going to tr- show his true sides and side with the bloodline again, or is Jay Uso really made of Jay Uso and uh, someone that can be a single star on his own and also maintain a crowd presence that is kind of unmatched right now? Oh yeah, he's over as hell right now. Like the three most loves- over wrestlers in wrestling yeah. right now is like it's him, it's Cody Rhodes, and it's LA Knight. Oh yeah. And they're all on the same pro- promotion. I'm sorry, I hate to break it to AEW <laughs> yeah. fans. Oh yeah, um, and hey, there's a you know there's a couple others, uh, but it's like New Japan and everything. Yeah, it's like but, New you Japan. Know, we could get into it. We'll get we'll, we'll get into the mud of that when we yeah. get to the mud of that. But we'll keep we'll keep it a uh, surface level for right now. Yeah, um, um, yeah, the, the show was really good. Yeah, and the next match was a uh, LWO versus uh, Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits <laughs> with the returning Carlito, which is one of the things again the saw. second return. Yeah, because he came back. He was at, uh, what was it? Backlash. Backlash. And they had that in Puerto Rico. And he came back. He made an appearance, but then he never came back. So then it's good to see him back. Uh, Definitely uh, interesting take, you know, putting the LWO. I know they're kind of growing. I mean, I know they previously had him, you know, in the... 90s, right? They had yeah, that, yeah. Uh, that was like Eddie Guerrero was Eddie Guerrero, in, was Guerrero, Guerrero Rey Mysterio. They're both, yeah, both Guerrero yeah. is Mysterio. Yeah. So um, it's good to see it come back and good to see Carlito. I mean, he was kind of one of the big wrestlers when I was watching WWE back then. He was uh, United States champion, Intercontinental champion. He was tag yeah. team champion with his brother, first ever unified tag team champion. So it's good. Hopefully, who knows, maybe we could get an appearance from his brother. That'd actually be pretty cool. He spits uh, in the yeah. faces of people who don't like to be cool. True. But yeah, it was, it was good to see him back, though, Carlito. He looks... Uh, 
I mean, he he's looked this way for a while, but he is his, his he has gotten so in shape is yeah. ridiculous. He doesn't yeah. even look close to who he was when he was wrestling. Because he was in shape before, but like now it's now just, it's just yeah, like, like yeah, he wasn't he wasn't like in poor shape at all when he was you yeah. know fighting John Cena for those titles. But like yeah. now he just looks like a like a, a beast. And oh it's like yeah, really sick. yeah. Because he also made a previous comeback like two years ago in 2021. Yeah. He was at the 2021 yes. Royal Rumble. Mm-hmm. And he came back, and then also the following night, I think he did, like, a tag match, too. Yep. And, yeah, and then he kind of disappeared again, but then he came back. So it's good. And, yeah, yeah, I mean, with all that lifting and training, I mean, yeah, he's definitely oh, yeah. in, like, really good shape. They did yeah, also have him come too. back for um for Backlash when it was in Puerto yeah, Rico. Puerto, Puerto, Puerto Rico. That was yep. really sick. Yeah. But this is, like, his official return long-term. Um, yeah. He's confirmed that he's on SmackDown now. Nice. It's been a long time coming, you know. There was a lot of people that were, because uh, the recent releases that were, Kind of worried because they were like, oh, it's going to be like David Hart Smith when David Hart Smith uh, got signed and then he got yeah. released before he even <laughs> Before did he even got to do yeah. anything. Yeah, but um, I'm glad Carlito's in the mix finally. They found something to do with him. That's going to be, it's going to be fun. I, I will say the biggest issue I had with this was um, what, uh, what the hell are the Street Profits and Bobby Lashley? Is it going to be like a handicap thing? Are they yeah. finally going to take Montez Ford? Away from Angelo Dawkins, is it going to be a face turn for one of those two? Maybe they do a face turn for Angelo. New member? Um, yeah, new member maybe. I just um, want more though from these guys. These guys aren't like I don't know. I'm just not re- convinced. The Street Profits don't feel any different than how they did before. They're the, just they the just have Bobby suits. Lashley attached to them and suits. That's it. That they, Bobby Lashley <laughs> in suits. That's it. That's literally it. And like I want more because I yeah. you know I I we've, we've had this conversation before. Where I'm I'm. After his chamber performance earlier last year, I am or this year, I'm sorry. He is absolutely Montez Ford in this case, absolutely yeah. 100 um, capable of being like a superstar in the WWE. Mm-hmm. He has the charisma, he has the in-ring ability, he has the mic ability. Um, you know, the crowds love him. He's like he's funny, but knows when he has to take it seriously. And yeah. I, I have a lot of high hopes for Montez Ford. Mm-hmm. And I hope that, you know, the WWE realizes what they have in him before it's too late, before he either gets too old or decides that he's had enough of being, you know, being second fiddle at, at this company and moves on somewhere else. Yeah. Um, and then the next match was the women's triple threat for the title. Pretty good. Um, pretty solid. Oscar, EO sky, Charlotte flair, um, they all did really well. I enjoyed this match. Um, I like that there's a little bit of, you know, um, with Bailey and EO, there's yeah. a little bit of tension and then, uh, Bailey helped her win and, you know, it's like, oh, it's well, but it, they're definitely leading to EO versus Bailey eventually. Yeah. I think it's only inevitable. Um, I could, you could anticipate her, um, turning on, ba- uh, EO before probably, I would say rumble. Yeah. Maybe even earlier. I wonder um, if they do a special SmackDown and that's like the main match. You know how like um, last year they did a special SmackDown because yeah. uh, there was no pay-per-view in December? Yeah. If they do that. I, would, I could see that being the match because I won't lie to you. I do feel like Charlotte's going to win the title eventually. Probably. Because they want they definitely want to do Charlotte Bianca. Personally, I don't think it needs a title because they're both like it, the match sells itself, you know, yeah. two of the biggest women stars in that division. And, you know, they also, the women also need to get more, you know, feuds without a title on pay-per-views, and this would be a good one to have. This is the one to have without a title, honestly. Yeah, it's a really, really good one. Um, it's got the the two names that you need on it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, one of the longest-running um, Raw Championship run, women's Raw Championship runs we saw yeah. out of Bianca. Charlotte Flair is uh, tragically enough Charlotte Flair, so you know you'll you'll get you'll get a lot of her because you know people love Charlotte Flair over there at the WWE front offices, which isn't a bad thing. I like she's, her too. She's a phenomenal wrestler. Um, it's I think a lot of it is just the over pushing thing that yeah. a lot of people have their gripes with, but I'm personally fine with Charlotte Flair. I think she's a phenomenal wrestler. I think she plays a really good heel, um, and hopefully that Bianca and Charlotte Flair does kind of become a reality for for Mania because I think that would be a really good one. Yeah, I um, with Charlotte Flair right now, I feel like she's in such a weird spot because like, this is the most un Charlotte Flair she's ever felt. She doesn't really do promos. She hasn't really done much lately. It felt it feels it's less felt royal. Weird. Yeah, I don't know what like compare Charlotte to last year, even earlier this year when she was feuding with Rhea to like now, and it's like she put on the best women's wrestling match of the year with yeah. Rhea uh, earlier this year, and. You know, no disrespect to how she is now, but like, it do, it just doesn't 
feel the same, which no. is like fine. I like that they're giving more screen time to you know to oh, so. to other stars, um, and I hope that that's a choice on her behalf that she isn't you know yeah. demanding that she gets put uh, over people like you know, she had the reputation of doing mm-hmm. when the first fifteen times she won a championship. <laughs> um, but hopefully. Hopefully that pans out. I'm st- yeah. People are still wondering where the fuck Jade Cargill is going to go. Yeah. Um, and I can only anticipate that being a match with Rhea Ripley. I can't imagine it being anything else, and I think it's going to be a fucking banger when that match happens. Oh, I forgot to mention. Uh, that's the one thing from Fast I forgot to mention. She did make an appearance on she the did. kickoff show. Yeah, she was uh, with Triple H, and then later on NXT with Shawn Michaels. And that's, like, they're making her a big deal, and I love that so much for her. As they should. She yeah. is, she is, in fact, she, you know, when you, when you, signed from a rival company and you were literally the longest reigning champion in that company's history it's Mm -hmm. it's only inevitable that you get treated like a big star when you get here and i love that for her because she she put in the work as a champion over at aew and i think rightfully earned her spot over here at the roster and is getting the love that she deserves yeah and i'll talk about her uh later on on the show Mm -hmm. in regards to nxc versus aew last night yeah um as of recording this will probably be out thursday friday but um yeah, no, a great way to debut her. Um, like, you know, just it's kind of like what they did with Bobby Roode when he was debuting on NXT where they had him, you know, on the crowd. Then they had him going to Regal's office on in uh, NXT TakeOver. Yeah, the no end. in-ring action off the bat, yeah, which just, is, I think it's good build up for, for people who aren't familiar with AEW's product, just how big of a deal she is. Oh, I think yeah. if you keep having these superstars kind of give her the... You know, give her the nod and keep having people like Triple H and Shawn Michaels, you know, give her that seal of approval, the yeah. the megastar treatment that she does deserve. I feel like um, it's only inevitable that when she does eventually get into the ring, it's going to be a really big deal. I agree. And, um, yeah, the next thing in the card was uh, Jimmy Uso and Sol Sokoa representing the Bloodline versus John Cena and L.A. Knight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. John Cena <laughs> and, back in the ring. Yeah, and... For the most part, it was a f- good match. I think that this was probably the most fun match of the night. And yeah. I think that's exactly what they wanted to accomplish. Mm-hmm. Um, props to Jimmy and Solo for being willing to really put Knight over. There was that one spot where it was literally, Cena was on the floor and it was just um, LA Knight just throwing yeah. punch after punch at both of them. And people were just <laughs> saying, yeah, after every punch. And it was so sick. Yeah. Um, I th- I would anticipate him probably being in a match with Roman Reigns very soon. I don't yeah. think he's going to win, but um, I do anticipate him being in a match with Roman Reigns very soon. Yeah. L.A. Knight yeah. and Roman Reigns for the title? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, probably, and I mean, w- Roman probably won't drop it, but um, I think that he absolutely deserves it. He's the hottest star in wrestling right now. Yeah. Um, even people like Cody Rhodes on NXT were giving him that title, and now it seems like... WWE is kind of all in on calling him the hottest megastar in wrestling right now. Yeah. And, and um, deservedly so. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they all had a great performance in this. It was a fun match, you know. Um, I think, I don't know why, I'm feeling Crown Jewel might be a fatal four way. I feel like it's going that way for some reason because you have AJ feuding with the Bloodline, you have John Cena feuding with the Bloodline, you have LA Knight feuding with the Bloodline. I feel like, and, you know, I don't think they're going to do another Reigns-Cena match, even though um, NXT happened. Uh, but I just feel like it might be leading to a fatal four-way, and then LA Knight gets a one-on-one shot later on, or Styles, who knows. Either way, I'm very, very excited for whatever match we get because those are two fun matches that, you know, when you have uh, Roman, Styles, Cena, and Knight in the ring, that will be magic. That will be a great fatal four-way. sounds like Crown a really Duel. great matchup yeah. for sure. And yeah. if, if it's Roman versus LA Knight, then that's even, you know, that's just as good too, you know, two of the biggest stars right now. Um, one just breakout star of the year for sure. Um, if the Slammy Awards were still a thing. But, yeah, if the Slammy Awards are uh, still a thing, absolutely breakout star of the year. Yeah. Three pay-per-views in a row. Shout out LA Knight. Dude's been great. Um, I will say um, John Cena looked like he was having a fucking blast out yes. there. He looked like he was having... I'm not saying that he ha- he doesn't look like he's having fun all the time because he absolutely does. That's just John Cena. John Cena loves yeah. to have fun. That was his first match in a while. But that was his yeah. first match in a Paper while, match. and like since WrestleMania, right? He looked like yeah. he was yeah, having a fucking yeah. blast. Uh, yeah. His five knuckle shuffle after after LA went down. Yeah, his his his, his little face, the way he threw <laughs> up his hands. The second he he threw down the "You can't see me," that entire crowd just echoed it all at yeah. the same time. It was so sick. 
And um, I think what part of it is, like, you know, compared to, like, WrestleMania, is that in WrestleMania, he I feel like he knew he had to wrestle with restrictions because of his acting career. But now since there's a strike, it's not like he has any restrictions at all because who knows when that ends and everything. Yeah. Um, And, you know, he's just going all out right now. He's had three matches, but two of them were untelevised. Um, so this is, like, the first big TV match he's had since Mania. And... Mm-hmm. He looks solid, you know. I feel like he, uh, at the press conference, he was giving himself too much hate, and I get it, you know, um, as performers and everything. Like, y- your biggest critic will it always be always yourself. Being, yeah, yeah, it's always going to be So yeah. I get it, but, you know, like, I think he did a pretty solid out there. Um, and overall, this was a pretty fun match, which leads us to the main event uh, for the World Heavyweight Championship. Last man standing, Seth freaking Rollins Versus beats Shinsuke, Shinsuke Nakamura. Nakamura. Um, honestly, n- I th- I thought Damian Priest was going to cash in. Me too. I was convinced that after the Judgment Day lost, that there was no way in hell with the you know with the stipulation that Seth's back is like literally dissolving by the second, um, that there was no way Damian Priest doesn't cash in. But I guess they want to keep the Judgment Line or Judgment Day breakup <laughs> uh, like you know storyline going a little bit, which is fine. Um, there was a lot of increased tensions on Monday, and yeah. it was really cool watching JD McDonough get his head kicked in. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think the, the match itself was, was phenomenal. The Falcon arrow through the, yeah. the table finish was really sick. Um, and Shinsuke can I just looked say, like a villain. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Sorry for interrupting. No, you're good. Go for it. Can I just say uh, my favorite thing actually, uh, before the, how about what's the fact that before the match they had Rhea taking away the, um, Damien's briefcase and saying, no, you're not in good condi- condition to cash in tonight. Because, you know, usually you'll be having a lot of people saying, oh, why didn't this guy cash in? Like, Seth's like, you know, his back's messed up. Like, but they gave a good reason. He was um, hurt. And yeah. Added more tension to the to the uh, Judgment Day line. And I think, um, you know, I didn't mind a lot of the booking decisions that were made during Fastlane. I do wish yeah. that the Street Profits won, but that's just me. Mm. Um, I guess you can't really spoil Carlito's return like that, <laughs> yeah. which is fine. Um, it's Carlito, you know. People love him. And he can recover, too. Yeah, he, he can recover, too. Um, but besides that, I mean, I know a lot of people were upset that Shinsuke didn't win. Yeah, um, and but I would like to get into that, too, for yeah. a sec. I, I get it, because I like Shinsuke a lot, you know. Uh, he's one. He's definitely one of my favorite wrestlers in WWE. But, like, I said this, I said this somewhere else, too, um, when I was having a conversation with someone about it, but I see a lot of people complaining about Seth's reign. Oh, it's too long. Oh, this and that. But it's like, yeah. That's it's the, point. the first World Heavyweight Championship reign in this title's history. It should be this long. And not just that, for the last three years, Seth earned this. Because for the for last, last three years, He has man, done nothing but <laughs> lose <laughs> and lose and lose. Uh-huh. Lost to Matt Riddle. Lost to Cody Rhodes, who lost to Lost, lost to, to Roman Mysterios. Reigns, lost to the Mysterios, Edge. lost to Edge. Like I, I'll um, start with Kevin Owens at WrestleMania. You know, yeah. WrestleMania years mm-hmm. ago. Like he's just lost. Like this, you know. Like and then uh, he goes down to the mid card because Roman has both belts. Um, and people are like, ah, he's above the U.S. title and everything. But then when they give him a world title, yeah. they're like. Wow, do we really have to give him the title for this long? Yeah, like, come on, man. Like, he's held know. it since May, right? Yes. May, yes. May, so. And it's like, it's not that long of a reign. And the thing is, too, is this guy is like, I, I could understand hating on this if this was like, sorry to bring in more Roman Reigns hate, but <laughs> if this guy was a part time, well, was a part timer and, you know, yeah. didn't dedicate himself to the company, but this guy wrestles. Every single night that he can. And it's still not enough for this And it's guys. still not enough. He will wrestle at every pay-per-view. He will wrestle at every Raw. Oh, dude, when we saw him live, he was out. Yeah. He was in that show like two t- two times, right? Mm. He, he opened the show and then he um, he wrestled uh, Damien. He wrestled Damien at that yeah. show. And like he cl- he's clearly dedicated to the product. Mm. WWE clearly loves him because he loves WWE as much as WWE loves him. Yeah. Um, he has done nothing but dedicate himself to putting people over. If you are someone who is willing to put Matt Riddle over, then I promise you, you have done <laughs> more than Riddle, enough right? to earn yourself a title Especially slot. Especially because they had beef too, and the they fact had he real still, beef. He still put him over and everything is amazing. Like I don't know, um, but being just, willing to put over Cody Rhodes three he, times without a win, without a single win, mm-hmm. like. We don't Getting really get trilogy. Logan Paul, like <laughs> wrestling Logan Paul and making yeah. the match like. Awesome. great the match is awesome yeah. like 
I don't. I, I just don't see where people have the complaints with Seth Rollins being yeah. the world title holder, especially because it's Seth Rollins, dude. Mm. Like, I, I'm looking at you, Reddit. Like, I see your comments and everything. R slash R slash SC. R slash SC Circle Jerk. <laughs> <laughs> like all of you guys, just love to hate on Seth Rollins, which is well, fine. SC you Jerk can, loves Roman. Yeah, I mean Roman. Uh, Seth. So they, oh yeah, they do love. They hate Roman more than, than Seth. No, they love Roman a lot. It's uh, I think they hate more like the AEW guys. <laughs> that is true, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, like you know, just give Seth his props, man. Like he's he's clearly dedicated to this company, and the back stuff literally is like not a joke. No. He is actually shattering his back every <laughs> night to do this. Yeah. Um, and he d- still loves to do it day in and day out. Mm-hmm. And like I remember, they hinted at him retiring on Monday, and he was like. Nah, I'm just fucking with you. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, yeah. nah, I'm just fucking with you. I think you. it would be too soon, too, because he's yeah. he's been there for 11 years. Yeah. So he, I, th- I think, I think he's soon. still got at least like another like nine years in him. Yeah. And like, also, guys, Shinsuke two months ago was like the fifth man eliminated from that battle royal and <laughs> exactly, SummerSlam. Exactly, dude. Like, come on, man. Like, you know, if this was like someone like that was super hot. Also, like there were the complaints like, oh, Finn Balor shouldn't be, have been Seth Rollins. After like three weeks of Seth Winning the title? You yeah. kidding me? Get out of here. <laughs> and Dumb like, kick. I'm sorry, but it's 2023. Do we yeah. really need Shinsuke Nakamura winning world titles in yeah. 2023? They don't. He doesn't need it, and Finn Balor doesn't really need it either. It'd and, be nice to see him again. Don't and get like, me wrong, I, th- I think a lot of people's gripes with that is that it's like, oh, but Seth doesn't need it either. Okay, but like. I'm sorry, but beating Seth Rollins mm-hmm. means more to an up and coming wrestler than beating Shinsuke Nakamura. Yeah. Like when you say you beat Seth Rollins, which he will let you do if you oh. absolutely need it. Yep. You can beat Seth Rollins and you can go straight over the top. Yep. Uh, sorry, Logan Paul, for <laughs> for for implying that you weren't an over the top wrestler, but you uh, kind of needed to get your ass kicked at that yeah. show. And Omos, too. And like, Omos, yeah. They they give him you know they gave him the giant spot where he just you know like they give they're giving him everything after all these years of putting people over and everything he deserves it absolutely. You know? And whoever says that his reign should end now, you're wrong. <laughs> I'm sorry, but you're wrong. Uh, but overall, I think this was I would say this is the worst of all the pay per views this year. But yeah. it's really good. But that's it's still, shows, that's a good because this mm-hmm. this was like I was paying attention for most of Fastlane. Mm-hmm. I didn't hate any of fast lane yeah i just think that right now the product is phenomenal i think that wb hasn't missed since 2023 started uh-huh. um that might be a hot take for some people but i think that they've just been putting out good product um you know a couple booking decisions here and there but mm-hmm. overall like the bloodline story was one of the it was probably the best thing in wrestling in the past like five to ten yeah. years like without a doubt it was it was phenomenal, and I think that if they keep up this hot streak going into next year, hopefully by Mania, um, this could be looked back on as like one of the best years in WWE's history. For sure. Um, and with that, I think we both agree. Solid show. Solid show. And yeah. With that said, now on to the... Now on to big, Tuesday. On to Tuesday. You know, Monday, not too much going on. Um, Becky and Tegan had a good match. Um, cool uh, cool main event. Yeah, cool main event, too. Jimmy, or sorry, Jay and, uh, Jay and Cody versus Sammy and KO. Yeah. KO finally gives his respect. Yep. Uh, so, about it. <laughs> yeah, just to recap that, you know, uh, shortly. But because everyone wants to talk about yesterday. What um, a night for wrestling. <laughs> what and, a night. Dude, not even a night, a day. I oh, on a random Tuesday. Let me um. Thank you to the to the uh to Major League Baseball for giving us <laughs> whatever the hell that was last night because oh man, that was really cool to watch. Yeah, it was cool seeing fucking John Cena come out of an NXT entrance. Mm. Seeing Undertaker the Undertaker and- come out of an NXT entrance. Uh huh. Um, what else was really? Like Ilja Dragunov is still the coolest yeah. guy in wrestling. Oh. Um, I forget Cody on Raw, on NXT Cody too. on NXT, Asuka yeah. retains her her uh, title as the gatekeeper of NXT. Yeah, still after this many years has never mm. lost in an NXT ring. Yeah, and I did catch AEW too, and Danielson versus Swerve was such a cool match. You know, like it was such it was it was two fun shows. Uh, yeah. With that. Um, I had to pull it up here. Pretty apparently, uh, though. Last night, NXT 
beat AEW in the ratings, oh. 921,000 to 609,000, <laughs> dude. And it's only I bring it up <laughs> because I say, I said, you know, Gio said night. I said day. Because, you know, but the night was great. But Tony Khan on Twitter, man, he was He talking was typing so a fucking way. <laughs> he tweeted something else out today, too. Do you yeah. Think about um, Shawn Michaels. He said, uh, so, well, 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 to start off, yesterday, you know, he was like, oh, like, you guys are, so you guys want to be dicks. And uh, then he's like, yeah, we're commercial free now also. And then, <laughs> then he's talking more shit and just like saying, you guys are bald assholes. Like, yeah, oh, that was a real thing that was said so, by Tony Khan. Like, it's, dude, this is the owner of a company and I'm just, and then today after, you know, or actually this was before, uh, someone said that HBK is Booker of the Year. And this guy says, actually, I'm pretty sure that last night blew whatever chance he had of winning that award. The fuck is up with this guy, dude? I know it was his birthday and everything, but... No, you're a like, dork, bro. <laughs> this guy's a fucking dork, dude. I like AEW a lot. Um, I love all a lot of the wrestlers there. You know, so many wrestlers I've seen over the years from New Japan or WWE. Um, I think it's a fun promotion, but I don't like Tony Khan's just, you know... his. Ad- well, I think it's just- fun when he... When he chooses to have fun with it, but it's yeah. really, really apparent that um, he, what's the word I'm looking for? An inferiority complex. Yeah. He he hates that. The he, little brother He hates mentality. being the little brother. And I mean, like, look, I get, it. I, I get it, but also it's like being the little brother to the biggest wrestling product of all time really isn't that bad if no. you think about it. I mean, no. WWE has always been the top of out of all of wrestling. And I don't yeah. think that's ever going to change until the, the company like, building explodes. They've, Only WCW has been. They were like close because they had the yeah. Monday Night Wars. They had, yeah, they yeah. had the invasion that, angle. Yeah. Like, that was the closest. It was like Jim Crockett promotions and all this. So you have to yeah, go like so, to the 80s and 90s. So WWE, neck it's, neck. whatever's came, they've always been able to maintain on top. I mean, yes. sometimes they'll lose some stars. They'll go over. But for the most part, WWE still seems to, you know, reign at the top of wrestling. Yeah. Um, and most wrestlers' goal is to be making oh, it in WWE. Make it to the WWE. WWE. Yeah. yeah, I mean that's like basically the home all be all is to make it in the WWE. You know you've succeeded. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean it's mm-hmm. basically when you guys talking about this. I don't really watch wrestling as frequently anymore, but I still, of course, follow up with it and yeah. know what's going on. But basically, it looks like we had the Monday Night Wars. Now it's like the Tuesday Night Wars because yeah. or and, war. Yeah, or war. It's just war, bro. At this point, it's just war. Yeah. But it's not even a war, dude, because... Because WWE bodies AEW every time. This is their Mm. developmental brand, and they just beat AEW's main main, That's their main roster, and they got their asses kicked. I don't care what you say about them bringing on their stars. Hey, you know what that means? If their stars are willing to come onto that show and represent Mm. WWE in the first place, maybe that's a good reflection of WWE as a company. And not just that. I see people, you know, like, I don't want to, like, because they're going to be like, oh, tribalism and everything. But there's a lot of people saying, oh, it's better than expected and everything and all this stuff. And it's like, man, you guys brought out Edge Danielson. And that number was still bad. There was numbers um, that were closer back that when they were actually Wednesday Night Wars. Like, mm-hmm. there was numbers closer, dude, when they had less stars, when they only really had, like, Moxley and Omega and all this guy. Like, they don't have nearly the main event stars they did in 2019. The thing is, that roster's packed. Yeah. I know. And when AEW came out, it, like... It was hot. It it was pretty big, yeah. Yeah. It was pretty big. It was, like, a new thing, a new wrestling. And I even saw some of it, and it seemed pretty good, and it got a lot of good feedback. But like you said now, they're getting all these other stars. Like, they had Daniel Bryan go their edge. And then CM Punk. I know last week we talked about yeah. his issues <laughs> yeah. going on. We'll, we'll touch yeah. on CM Punk later. But because, yeah, I can touch on yeah that. it's it's tough. Yeah. I mean, just always something about WWE. I think since it's been around so much longer, a lot of people grew up with it and nostalgia and just like kind of always seem to go back to WWE where it stood. I mean, of yeah. course, yeah, it's good to look at new shows too, but just WWE, they always seem to will you back in. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, dude, I... You know, like, I don't want to shit too much on AEW because, like I said, I like nah, the I love product. doing it. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, sometimes I can't stand their fan base, even though, like, I would consider myself an AEW fan. I, their fan base infuriates me, and just, it's fueled by Tony Khan even more. And, you know, there will be people saying, oh, that's not true. All this. No, it's true. It's true because Tony's the one that just really, really, really makes it a lot 
worse most of the time. I mean, look what time, yeah. look at his tweets the last couple you know hours, man. It's just nuts that this guy Renfrey. is the president of a company and he's tweeting out. Imagine if uh you know whoever the president of WWE is uh, Nick yeah um, Nick Khan yeah which is funny. <laughs> <laughs> like what if he what if he was tweeting that? Do you know how many people would be pissed off? They like imagine Vince was tweeting that they'd be upset like. But, you know, because it's Tony Khan, it's like, oh, it's just, you know, Tony on It's just Tony being Tony. Like, ah, I don't know. And um, it just doesn't seem like he likes taking criticism well either because, you know, he wants to, like, say, oh, yeah, I'm Booker of the Year because I book good matches. And this is uh, what I want to talk about earlier. You see how what WWE's doing with J. Last night, four AW, former AEW stars were in NXT. You had Cody kicking off the show. I don't need to explain Cody. You had Jade who made an appearance and already tweeted her big by, you know, being with Shawn Michaels in that segment. Uh, Blair Davenport Blair was Davenport. in something small uh, with Becky Lynch. Which, or no, not Becky Lynch. I'm sorry. Uh, Asuka, which was so cool. And then, Shawn, you want to talk? You want to tell me Shawn Michaels lost Booker of the Year last night? Dude, he found a way to make Brian Pillman Jr. interesting. <laughs> Something you win. couldn't do. He's going to win that whole tourney, dude. I'm telling yeah. you. <laughs> like, something you couldn't do. And I'm going to be honest. Who cares about the Booker of the Year award anyways? Yeah, I was going to say like, this. If you give a shit about what Dave Meltzer thinks, then you are part of the problem. Well, it's not even Dave Meltzer. It's his, uh, It's the subscribers that vote on it. And they voted Tony Khan last year when he shouldn't have won that award at all. That, like, 2021, <laughs> I could agree. 2020, I could agree. 2019, definitely could agree, too, there. But you mean to tell me last year... At the worst period of AEW with all and these some problems of the, and everything? Some of the best WWE products that we had gotten in a Ex- long time. Mm-hmm. With the Bloodline storyline and Tony Khan one. And the fact that Dave Meltzer and Brian Alvarez had to come out here and say, yeah, no, these guys, I don't know what our subscribers are doing. They weren't being objective here. Yeah. You know, like when those guys are saying that you guys are wrong, like you guys are wrong. And you think Tony Khan deserves it this year? Absolutely not. What's like, what storylines besides. MJF versus Adam Cole. Um, like what? You know, um, like, what else is there? BCC versus the Jericho <laughs> Society for the 50th time the, in a row. The elite. This the year. elite. Yeah. Um, FTR versus Young Bucks again. <sighs> Just, I don't know. And like, it's not like they're the product's bad right now or anything. Like, don't get me it's wrong. It's just not WWE. But it's just like some people just have to accept that, like, you know, like one product is getting people more interested more than the other like aw right now is not really doing the best in attendance the ratings are fine but the attendance has been empty in all of these arenas in 15k arenas dude and it's really bad and i i just want the product to succeed but i just want tony khan to just like be able to take criticism, take criticism. and everything you know like your CM product Punk can't should get have been better fired if, a year ago your product can't get all better if stuff. you think it's perfect yeah like I get it. He's been dreaming of this his whole life. And, you know, because he um, has the money to do it from his father, like, you know, he gets to do it. And I don't know. It's just I want to see I just want to see this company succeed. Well, I want them to see the same success they had in 2021, which was such a great year of AEW. That was my favorite year. No, actually, that or 2019, one of those two. But, you know, ever since 2022, like, this year's been kind of mixed for me. The pay-per-views have been good besides the or nothing. But, I don't know, it's just, it hasn't really hit me that much this year. Like, MJF and Adam Cole, that's the only thing that has really hit me. And the anti-Semitism thing they did last night was, like, Uh, you know. What a a terrible, terrible time to do it. Yeah, I know, like, people (laughs) are going to say, oh, but Juice Robinson, uh, he always does that. And you're right, Juice Robinson always does hit people with quarters. But it's one thing if he did that by not mentioning the fact that Max was bullied. But immediately as he mentioned that he's going to hit Max with the quarters, Excalibur is out here like, oh, like Ma- uh, this reminds me of the time Max got, you know, bullied because they threw quarters at him for being Jewish and everything. Like the implications already there. And the implications just there. And it's also the worst it's... possible time to do yes. this right now. Like we're not going to comment on that, but <laughs> yeah. this is really not a good time not to comment time, on anti-Semitism. Dude, like, and there are people defending this and saying like, oh, Oh, it's not the worst thing. They could, dude, if this was Vince McMahon doing it, they'd be complaining. They would have his head in the stick. Yeah. They would have his head in the stick. And they'd be like, oh, but MJF accepted it. But MJF doesn't speak for all Jewish people. Now, I I can't, you know, none of us can personally say how we feel about this because we're not Jewish. But, like, 
it, it's a, it was in bad taste. There was a lot of people um, on Reddit as well. There was this guy, uh, you know, he's like, as as a Jewish man, I just felt like this segment was, you know, unnecessary. Unnecessary. Like there was a lot of people saying that, but there was like a specific guy that made a thread about it because he's just like, there need. He made lots of good points. He's like, there just needs to be someone in the back because it's obviously not going to be Tony Khan that just reins the man and say, okay, maybe this isn't the best time to do it or, you know, something like that. They need an adult back there. Yeah. And they have a bunch of guys who aren't, you know. Aren't mature. Aren't mature. Or as, uh, what's his face? I In the show Success, and they're not serious people. AW, you got to work on it, man. They Come really on. do. Yeah, let's, 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 Tony, let's, let's, you know. Mm-hmm. Hop off the high horse a little bit. And if Tony thinks he deserves Book of the Year, man, Tony, I'm sorry. And, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if you somehow found this video because he finds all these other tweets, but <laughs> you're, you're wrong, bud. Like, HBK has been having a great product all year. He's made WWE's future look great. He has made some of the people who are on your roster look better than you did yourself. Like Blair Davenport and Brian Pillman in one night look so much better than they did in their whole entire AEW run. You mean to tell me like that Shawn Michael doesn't deserve that reward? Just be humble, man. Like he needs to just be humble. <laughs> I don't know what is the de- I mean, I know what's the deal, but like he just has no humbleness whatsoever. You know, it's always like, yeah. Like, I think we have a great product. And I know you have to be a promoter and promote, and that's fine, but don't be so delusional and act like you're perfect, you know, because you could say all this, but you need to back it up, too. You need to change stuff in the back, um, you know, how you handle your wrestlers, all this drama and everything. Just, it needs to end, dude. Like, <laughs> just fix it. I don't want to see WCW 2.0 and see this company go under because it made me sad already that TNA uh, didn't go under, but, you know, it's They're not the same like it once that. was, you know? And I, and I love Impact. Era. Yeah. I, I don't think I hear anything from TNA anymore. And no, it, they, they're good though. They're, they changed right, his name yeah. like it's Impact now, right? Yeah, right, yeah, yeah, and yeah. their Bound for Glory shit looks really good so far. Like Mike Bailey versus Will Osprey. I could get into that more later, but you know, like great it looks great. <laughs> Is that's there good, any big like right people there. that are on Impact right now? Like <sighs> notable? Yeah, um, that was from like WWE or anything. There's a lot of them that's like you know like former t- like Mickey James is one. Oh, uh, okay, Naomi Trinity. Trinity, um, I forgot Trinity was on. Um, that was the biggest sign they had this year, and she's done really well for them, and nice. she's helped them out a lot. Um, Heath Slater. Uh, Heath Slater's on Impact. Yeah, oh, wow. there's a yeah, there's a good amount of them. Rhino, Rhino, Rhino. Yes. Is, well, are they teaming together? Because I know they're a team um, one time. I don't think they are at the moment. No. Um, they should I bring that back. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Fandango. There's like a couple okay. of them, but they're not like in big roles or anything. Didn't you know? there was one time in. Where, like, WWE and Impact, they teamed up. Wasn't Mickey James? Yeah, at the that was cool. Yeah, yeah they, they, like, announced her, they announced her as the Impact Women's Champion. That was really Yeah, sad. that was interesting. Was yeah, cool I would moment. never think, because usually the competitors, you know, they're very competitive. They would never, you know, give clout to another organization, but I'm surprised they were able to do that. That was interesting. Yeah. That was, like, what, two years ago, right? Yep. Yeah, that yeah. was a cool, cool moment. But, yeah, you know, like, um, I don't know. I, I just... It's just the AEW thing. Like, it's so funny to make fun of, but like, it is the tweets really are fun. the tweets as a like as an owner, you have to be so much more professional on that. You know, it's like the time like also when uh when he um was telling about how like making excuses about Fulham and everything. Like, oh, like I'm trying to find the best striker and every like all this other stuff. It made him look like a joke in the soccer community. Was making fun of him for that. He need like the wrestling community definitely is a lot more relaxed with him on it because a lot of people support him. But it's just, man, I don't know. Sorry. I'm great rant. That was a great rant. <laughs> I need, yeah. I need to get that out because it's just like, That's man. That's a good product right there. Tony Khan, <laughs> take notes. Tony Khan, take notes. Oh, man. But last but not least, uh, to end off the show, uh, <laughs> another person that is just needs to stop is CM Punk. And he, <laughs> we've heard back and forth, oh, CM Punk's talking to WWE. Oh, he's not talking to WWE anymore. Oh, but he is. But they're tr- going to sign him. Oh, actually, according to Dave Meltzer this morning, they didn't want to sign he him. Asked, he asked them to sign him, and they said, nope. Damn. <laughs> and it's just like... I mean, he... Because I grew up watching him in my day when he was in ECW. Then he worked his way up to Raw, became, you know, top star when, you know, winning the world championship. 
all that stuff. But I'm surprised. And then when he left WWE in 2014, he like uh, basically abruptly quit because yeah. he burned he, he yeah. burned the bridge right yeah. there. Yeah, because he was just I guess he was frustrated with uh, creative differences because I remember. At the time, I was watching it a little bit, and he was in the Royal Rumble, and then that was just, he just, like, disappeared. <laughs> We're yeah. wrestling for, like, what, never like... Never saw him again. Yeah, never saw him again for, like, what, like, seven years? And unfortunately, <laughs> we're, n- we're never going to see him in a WWE And I'm surprised, too, that I've never never, but, you I'm know. surprised that they didn't sign him, because, I mean, he, he was pretty big when I started, you know, when I was watching him in WWE. I mean, mm-hmm. he had all these certain stories. You know, he had a pretty decent feud with Jeff Hardy. Yeah. Uh, the John Cena one is John iconic. Cena. Yeah, he had the uh, John Cena one, the 2011, back that in money, 2011. That Money in the Bank match is one of the greatest wrestling matches of all time. John Cena yeah. and CM Punk. And um, yeah, so the thing surprised. is, I'm just people are realizing how toxic punk is. Like, let's be honest with the. I'm gonna be totally honest about the podcast with Call Cabana years ago. Uh, at the time, I was like, "Yeah, no, I'm on CM Punk's side. Fuck WWE." But looking back on it, if you like, you know, listen to some of the things he says and everything, he is an asshole, dude. Like, he does not look good at all. Looking back on it, like, also, you know, there's some the certain piss things. off if you signed him. Yeah. There's some certain, be- you know, certain things like he was on, you know, right on the money on. But then there's others like, oh, you need to make Roman look strong. Like, why did he need to put that out there? And it hurt Roman Reigns' career very badly. And I could see why Roman doesn't want him there because it's just like. Roman Reigns, Seth know? Rollins, Kevin Owens. Yep. Um, who else AJ does- Styles. AJ Styles really doesn't like him. Yeah. Like, you, are you really willing to piss this many people off for a yeah. big pop in Chicago? Is this wow. what you're willing to do? Mm-hmm, like, piss off two of your biggest stars in the company because mm-hmm. because you want the the cool clip of everyone cheering at his music in Chicago. Yeah. What really did he worth? say about Roman? Anymore. What did he say about Roman Reigns? Um, the complaint was uh, TLC 2013. He uh, It was him versus the Shield in a handicap oh, yeah. match. Yep, and and they then, put Roman over. Yeah, and then... Um, he actually won the match. That's a funny thing. Um, but, and he f- still found a way to complain about that. That's crazy. And he was complaining, like, about the amount of times they told him to make Roman look strong because he's their next star. And he kept complaining about it and complaining about it. And after, you know, before that, Roman was getting some fine reaction. Like, he was getting good reactions and everything, you know. Mm-hmm. People were liking him because, you know, he was part of the Shield, which everyone loved and everything. Yeah. But after that, that's when you start to notice that people started hating on him. The Rumble win... And everything. Yeah, because this was mm-hmm. yeah, because he had left because TLC twenty thirteen that that comes around the holidays, December, and yeah. then he left like a month, mm-hmm. a little over a month after. Yeah. Wow. And the thing is, like, if CM Punk never said that, there's a chance that people might have reacted better to Roman Reigns because mm-hmm. let me tell you, a lot of people. I mean, you would know. Uh, some of us. I mean, I think all of us here would know. A lot of people were getting so sick of John Cena <laughs> at the time, Dude, and they wanted to see <laughs> they wanted to see a brand new face in WWE and everything. And you mean to tell me, like, you know, like if CM Punk never said that, they like that uh, Roman wouldn't be getting better reactions. Like the f- the fact that they were pushing someone new would have gotten Roman more cheers and boos and everything. Yeah. But you know, then CM Punk's out here. Let's oh, they complain. You know, they talk to me too much about making Roman look strong and ever- and. Here we are, and now you know he caused problems in AEW. Now the thing in WWE though is like, if he goes there, they he's not going to be doing the shit he did in AEW because he knows it's his better, last. Well, his one last he knows it's his last yeah. chance, and they have a way better system too. Like, there's a reason why you never heard of backstage fights with him in WWE, but you heard it in AEW and ROH. They have oh. a system there, and it works. They know how to make a good product, and look, I know people complain about the strict guidelines at WWE, but that's what makes the yeah. product good. Even Tony is realizing that, you know, like, there's a down. reason. You got to put your foot down because, you know, this is a controlled product. Matt, yeah. I was mention- I was going to mention this earlier when we were talking about the, or the Tuesday Night War. Mm. Um, WWE knows how to, like, perfectly, meticulously manipulate their product so that it is the best possible. Down to like the littlest thing, mm-hmm. whether it be fucking Ilja Dragunov saying that he whooped that trick, yeah. or like it's it's just it's the little things like that where it's mm-hmm. they know how to make their product like perfect. Yeah, whether it be like and I mean we see, you we've seen a lot. Have you seen a live WWE show? Yes, I have. Like you, you, we you we've experience. all seen the things that go into making that show. Per- the amount of people constantly working, they're obviously yeah. in a rush because it's 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 planned down to the minute. Yeah, mm-hmm. all of it is planned pace. down to the yeah. minute. Yep. Uh, wrestlers know when to stop wrestling. Uh, good, good spots during 
uh, like commercial breaks and know when the cameras are back on and know when to hit certain spots and know how loud to say something and stuff like that. It's mm-hmm. like, it's the things like that, that for me, that's what takes like the, the very meticulous, like small things. That's what yeah. puts WB over because the product looks more refined. It looks cleaner. It looks, you know, it looks like something that would actually happen the way it is. It's, you know, when you look at the bloodline story, some of the looks that Jimmy and Jay and Sammy were giving to Roman, some of the, it's just stuff like that where it's like, you know, down to like their facial expressions. It's, mm. it's stuff like that that really puts WB over for me. Yeah. And I feel like, uh, also new Japan's like, you know, to a lesser extent a little bit, mm-hmm. but new Japan's also one that does a very good Straight, job. They yep. do, um, the new Japan show this week, um, I'm in the middle of watching it so far. So good. Um, destruction and I forgot where it was, but, um, you know, like there's just certain things they know how to make stars. They, 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 you know, I feel like someone like a Tony Khan or even other wrestlers, you know, I mean, wrestling owners, um, they have to look at what, you know, WWE does in even what new they've Japan mastered does it. Because, they have, they have yeah. the years over them that they, they just mastered because it. look at, dude, look at new Japan Okada. That dude is money. That dude is money. Actual. Like he's just, yeah. a, he's just a, like a piggy bank filled <laughs> with cash. Like, He's been on top for so long and everything, and people are still cheering him to this day. Because he's great. Because he's amazing. He's probably the best wrestler in the world. I agree. He's probably the best wrestler I in agree. the world. Like, Who's this? Uh, Kazushika Okada. Yeah, he's a wrestler Kazushika in New Okada, Japan Pro Wrestling. Pro Wrestling. Amazing dude. And, you know, um, I was like, I fell out with New Japan for a while after, uh, like, the pandemic started. Mm-hmm. Um, and then in Jul- July, uh, January, for I resubscribed for the first time in three years for Wrestle Kingdom. Um, especially with the rumors of Mercedes Monet showing up. And now she is there. And, yeah, and it's been such a fun product for me. It's been the best they've been in years. Because uh, I still kept up with it a little bit, but I didn't watch as much as I did. But this one, this year has been a really fun one. And, you know, they have a really, really good group of young stars coming up uh, in New Japan. They got um, these guys like Yoda, um, Sh- uh, Shuda, Omino. Mm-hmm. So many of uh, you, yeah, like there's a lot of them that are just looking great. Um, and I'm just really excited to see like what the future holds for New Japan, too. Those are like the WWE and New Japan are the best two companies right now to build new stars. What but, about ROH, Ring of Honor? They're they still uh, a thing, they're yeah, AEW, they are, but they're AEW product now, yeah. Oh, they're part of AEW, yeah, Tony, they, bought them. Tony bought them out, and that's oh, another wow. thing, too. Tony's been. Like, this is the last thing I'll say uh, before the video ends. Um, <laughs> you got to end it with what he was most passionate about, yeah. hating Tony Khan. <laughs> yeah. I hate R- like how ROH is right now because it is just AEW with a different name. Yeah. Like, it's, just a, it's just a different AEW This man show. said a- ROH is the best it's been in years. And, and they said that they would keep all the stuff that people loved about ROH in ROH, but now it's just AEW too. Yeah. The male champions don't even show up there. Yeah, because they're always wrestling on AEW. <laughs> exactly. And it's like, <laughs> it's, it's like, tragic. man, my thing is they should just make it developmental at this point because. It is what it, that, cause that's, a, that's what it is. Yeah. The ROH has always been just another rung in the line. Or it's what it could just could be at this point because like, you know, like, you know, there's a lot of young stars in AEW right now and they're putting them on Dynamite and Collision with no character or anything. Like, you know, just put them in a place where they could succeed and have more leeway to do stuff. Don't worry about ratings and all this stuff. You know, like, it, ROH would be such a good place for that. They should, really should make it developmental. Make it so it's somewhat unique to AEW because right now it's just, like I said, it's just AEW with a different name. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. all their stars are wrestling on Dynamite Collision. They're not exclusively ROH. Like, you know, it's make just... Make them exclusive. Make them unique. Yeah. You have the talent. There's 122 men on your roster, pal. You Luke's could put there. some of them there. What a good, what a good way to end the episode. You yeah. just ranting about Tony <laughs> Khan again. Uh, if that doesn't show you what JP thinks about Tony Khan, I don't know what will. Yeah. <laughs> and to the AEW fan base, I like AEW. And if you say I hate AEW, you're just wrong. Anyways, <laughs> thank you for watching our video. Um, I think we'll be back next week. We should be back next yeah, week. Yeah, we should be back next week. Uh, this one's a long one, but hey, I don't mind it. More um, product. Yeah. Take notes. <laughs> but yeah, thank you for watching, and uh, we'll be back next week. Um, we'll see what else happens in wrestling because there's quite a good amount, you know, um, especially with Roman's return on SmackDown tomorrow or tomorrow, Friday. Friday. Um, okay. 
And yeah, you know, who knows? So we'll talk um, about it next week. Yeah. Oh, actually, one last thing I want to talk about. I forgot. Seth versus Drew is announced for. Crown oh, Jewel. yes. Crown Jewel is going to be really good. I have yeah. a good feeling that Crown Jewel is going to be really good. Yeah. The World Heavyweight Championship match. That should be a good one. That's all I want to say okay. before I end the video. So they, I totally forgot to mention I, I also forgot that they announced that match. That was yeah. like the whole thing, too, is that like he stopped him from cashing in. All right, anyways. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyways, uh, thank you guys for watching, and we'll be back next week for Real Rap Wrestling, part th- episode three. Not part three, episode three. So, yeah. <laughs> thank you, and good night, or good afternoon. <laughs> or good day. <laughs> No one ever cared what you said, but to say that means Never listen in to my mom say Always had a dream on moving at my mom's place Always hesitate when it came to putting on the wrong face When it came to putting it on face When it came to building up a better being But a better, better being Never been in the back of your thoughts Never ever thought you'd ever see him But I bet that you were heated But you're still in the back of your thoughts Nightmares and dreams in the back of your thoughts Life with a meaning